haven't had enough coffee for that. I'm working on it. I'm uh, I'm getting there. Hmm. Yo, Dan from Cosmonaut Steaks. Anil from Bitwit. Stoked to see the fam here. We got people rolling in. This is uh, this is where the party happens. I, I like it here. You got somebody new to Discord. I see a default avatar in there. Boom. We're converting people to, to Discord. Just like we are to Passage. Yo, what up? Cyberobojo. Like, it's actually Jojo. I don't understand your username, but sometimes I, I just, I feel silly, like trying to pronounce all these exciting, sophisticated and creative usernames. You guys are too creative for me. Oh, when are we holding this meeting on passage? I had that thought right before this. Uh, yeah. I was doing a demo this morning. Yeah. And I was like, we should just be doing this in passage. Like, because this would be like the perfect crowd for it. Um, and again, we do this for GM tidings, right? Where uh, people can be in passage or we'll just share into the, uh, the discord. So next time, next week or next, next uh, steering committee meeting, we'll, we'll do it in passage. A blasty blast sounds good yeah well i think a lot of people are actually like traveling right now at token 2049 and other conferences so we might have a small yeah. day, but <laughs> yeah absolutely um we've got some good folks in here who are going to provide updates so our agenda today is basically to review the status of all the projects um, that we have ongoing um, and then talk about one new priority that we wanted to put out to the committee. So um, we have updates on the indexer, which if everyone saw, it's live. <laughs> Finally, this has been like a long time coming, running. So that's a huge win for us. Um, I know that there's still some requirements that other projects are going to require. Um, so we may need to update that. And I want to talk about that next. Um, so maybe I'll just kind of invite everyone who's going to share um, as a speaker right now. Yeah, that totally. Helpful. All right, Max, I'm going to invite me. If you want to speak, just join, um, send a request. Hey, everybody. Yo. So. That's that's our next speaker. Let's go on to it. Um, I wanted to talk about the marketplace UI UX um, progress. We have seen some Figma designs and wireframes. There's a lot happening yes, yes. there. Um, I know there's also some things that you'll need from the indexer. So let's talk about all of that. And if you don't mind, I'm just going to share my screen and show the Figma or unless you'd prefer we wait on that. Uh, no. You can go ahead, or I can share my screen uh, as well. Okay, um, yeah, sure. Do it. Do it. That's great. I'm sharing right now. Let me know when you guys see my screen. Loading for me. I can see it. I can see it loading. There we go. Loud and clear. Okay. Yeah, so these past two weeks, we have been working on... Um, low fidelity wireframes for uh, the marketplace. Um, this is some of the views that we have created um, that we have shared already with the team, um, now sharing with the community. I've been um, receiving some feedback from the team as well. Um, so I've been uh, fixing some things. Um, we had uh, Greg something. on the feedback. Yeah, yeah. So I've been working on that. Um, but here is kind of like the wireframes, kind of like the, the style we're, go we're going with. Um, and also I started working on more high, well, the, the first thing I did, um, we created some UI components based on the branding. So this is a kind of like what we have right now. And based on, um, the brand, we, I already started on the kind of like a high fidelity, um, why, um, wireframe. It's more like closer to what's gonna how it's gonna look right so yeah that's that would be the update love um it. love it yeah and just super exciting to see all these these details taking full advantage of the latest with the, the indexer it's feeling good if you guys have any questions share 
your your questions we, um uh within the proposal as well we once we make the prototypes based on the high fidelity wireframes um we want to share kind of like a tool so the prototype um there's a tool called maze which creates like mm -hmm. a like a live um ux testing like a user experience testing based on the prototype that we're going to create so but it, it's going to be really helpful to have the community um test right yeah, the that's awesome. testers of the of the that way we um we can all share feedback um see what you guys don't understand or you what you like and yeah and have the best version of the marketplace that's the idea I'm yeah that's awesome yeah oh yeah and i know that you you shared a document i think yesterday about indexer updates and so since we have max on from the cloudmost team I wanted to walk through like what other endpoints or you know data points are needed for you guys to implement um, and then we can talk about what it'll take to actually make that happen within the existing indexer yeah um so i have um adrian here from my team as well i don't know if adrian if you can up in the call <laughs> um so we can go through the document um to see if there's any like technical questions you guys um have so uh, what, what we were basically asking is uh, we're missing from the indexer um, some like statistics, like information based like volume sales. And so that's kind of like um, what we, we are needing. I'm going to share the document. Give me one second. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Hey, hey, guys, uh, uh, before all, uh, we not going to wait to Max Lab, right? Or we can uh, begin explaining what what endpoints we, we need to yeah that'd be great okay cool let me let me share the document that way you can have uh, I've got um, it. one second oh you got it okay perfect thank you Can everyone see that? Yep. It's still loading for me. Um, Got it. Might be my, my network, but go ahead. Um, you can go ahead, uh, Adrian. Cool. Uh, well, uh, 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 we was discussing about the 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 requirements that we that that is that is in the proposal, and we we. We just made a comparison between the the API that we now have in well the API that we are using now and API reference. We we use the, the Stargate reference to you know to compare what data uh, is necessary to develop the the UI using the the workframe. And I just put some methods that are, are available now. Uh, some of those methods are collection well get collection. Get collection by ID, well by address. Uh, also, I put the uh, tokens method. Uh, Here is the get NFT, uh, get NF get NFTs by collection address, and also dashboard analytics. Um, I put some example that there uh, using the the I have two two example using the passage passage API indexer. And using and having the example using the service API reference, and as you can see, uh, we have like general information. We have like the address in passage. We have the address, create the hey name symbol, main contact, magic contact. You know those properties. But we need to develop the wireframe. Can you please uh, share the wireframe, please, uh, in the in Figma? Quick to yeah. yeah. Well, uh, no. Well, there is there is an example. What well, there is an image that make a reference uh, into the into the Figma file a uh, uh, top in the top. Like a uh, after I think the a screenshot in the in the yeah document. yeah exactly yeah. Can you please go to the collection part? Uh, in the uses yeah over there. As you can see, there are there are some uh, values that are, is not provided by the API. For example, volume. Uh, this 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 uh, 
data is not is not uh, in the response from the API, and also in the next in the next uh, image that is the that is the list of collection. I think it's the page. Let's see. Um, before the first image, well, sorry, after the first image. Yeah, over there. You can see like the the sales, the supplies, and owners that have that that um, that collection. For collection, you have sales, supply, and owners, and the, the response of the indexer doesn't have that. Um, also, uh, let's see in the next image that have like the the, the yeah the, that container that have the description you can see the same the same data that that we don't have in the indexer api and we can pass with the with the next uh with the next uh endpoints tokens we have that also we have the use the uses that have the the images for for make the comparison the comparison between the the indexer and the, the Sergey's uh, API or API reference, we in the in the passage passage API we have uh, uh, in the in their object we have take token ID we have owner we have beta, metadata uh, we have uh, traits or attributes right, but we need to, for example, we need to. Uh, have uh, sorting sorting criteria to to do some some filters when we when we want to uh, get those tokens. For example, in Sergey's API, we have a criteria that you can that you can filter uh, by a life auction, buying buying out of fixed price, and 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 the API of Passage doesn't have that. We can. I, I just made some recommendation for 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 to not to construct uh, or for not to build the 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 uh, sorry um the 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 passage API from using RESTful. I I just made a recommendation is GraphQL service that that this library or this framework can can provide greater flexibility. In data manipulation, and you don't have to construct for for. I mean, you don't have to cons you don't have to, to construct an endpoint to to retrieve some data. For example, if if I if I can if I want to get collection, you, can you please go to the recommendation part, the final the final topic? Sorry, this this one. Yeah, I just make a like a quick recommendation to. How is the great way to construct the new API or to construct the the data that, that is missing now? Is use GraphQL nowadays? Based a uh, all well, like ninety percent of of NFT marketplace or uh, Web three application use this this technology and provide us a way to to query more efficient uh, the data that we need. That is uh, a great thing for for you because you don't have to construct for each for each method you don't have to construct a a type or or it's, yep. Yep. I mean it's it's more it's more flexible you know yeah and, no this is perfect because I know the indexer has all of this data right yeah yeah but adding the uh, the GraphQL uh, uh, interface allows us to get. I have to create an endpoint for every single variable. Yeah, exactly. Um, that is that is right. the problem. Huh? That then it it will be better use that because uh you don't you don't you are you are you are not using uh you are not creating something you are just querying information. I don't know I don't know how they in this case Stargate use I don't know if if they have a listener with the smart contract and they are like fetching those data and and saving in a in a database. I don't know. But I think it's, it is the the best way to to do that, you know, because we don't have Perfect. to create we don't have to create for each method uh, one oh sorry for each data one method, you know. But yeah, this is like a quick brief. That's perfect. That's perfect. And again, we have the document to reference. Thanks so much for putting that together. That's super super helpful. 
Max, do you have any questions on that? Otherwise, we can just offline too about um, specific next steps. I mean, again, we've got this document here. You can help us put together next steps on the indexer side of things. But any questions, thoughts? Um, yeah, well, uh, we're, we're going to reference that document. So thanks for putting that up. And our next step will be to open source the indexer slash API code. So uh, if someone else from the community wants to implement like the GraphQL client themselves, uh, they, they will be able to do it. And uh, yeah, well, we're going to have to make an analysis um, just all the requirements that you guys put up in that document before we make a proposal to implement them or if uh, yeah, someone else wants Perfect. to do it. Uh, yeah, Max, I realize that this is um, kind of beyond the scope of the initial project. So once you guys have a look at, you know, what it's going to take, let's talk about what we might add on to this as like an ongoing service agreement um, just to keep improving the indexer um, so we yep. can have a separate project and bounty for that. Yeah, and that was absolutely the expectation setting up the indexer is that we were trying to get it up as quickly as possible and that we'd expand on the functionality over time. So this this definitely lines up with expectations. Cool. Any question? I am available. Go. Perfect. Thanks, Adrian. Really appreciate that. And again, the everything's looking really good. I'm sure we'll have questions, but excited to get through to the uh, to being able to you know do some of the user testing. Um, yeah, it'll be a lot of fun. So, yeah, if anybody from the community wants to be a user tester, so you can contact the team. Um, oh yeah, we'll, like once it's done. we'll when you're when you're ready, we'll ping the alpha testers, and they'll, oh, they'll eat it up. It'll be good. Cool. Thank you. Okay, Beans, BK, what's next? Sorry, talk through smart contracts? I got rugged. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I think obviously marketplace sales data is also um, being worked on by the Node Fleet team. So, that's going to come after all of this. Um, I think we haven't really made too much progress on that front. Um, uh, yeah, sorry, I, I forgot about that. Um, we already have the wireframes also on the document. Um, you can see it like okay. really below everything I've done from the marketplace. There's like analytics part, which is the, the sales data. Um, That's perfect. We have the wireframes. If you have any feedback, um, Greg or anybody, um, just comment on the Figma. Mm -hmm. Perfect. We can share a link to the Figma in chat if, if that's okay um, with your team, and then we'll put it in the meeting notes as well. Yeah, no problem. Awesome. Okay. So next we have Tasio here to talk about his progress on the NFT staking contracts. I know that's well underway. And I know that um, James, his team, just created a repo for the front end um, on our GitHub. So wanted to get some updates there. So Tasio, I'll turn it over to you. Yeah, for sure. Um, I can talk about it a little bit. Um, so the, the contracts are, are done. Um, I need to transfer the repo for the contracts over to um, that passage chain org. Mm. So I'm going to make a request to basically transfer ownership of that repo over to, to you guys. And it's done at a high level. This is how it works. There's um, a vault factory that you can use to create vaults. Um, so you know you kind of you specify the unstaking duration and the specific collections that are going to be locked in the vault, and then you can create a vault. And once you have a vault created, um, you know anyone can go and stake their NFTs in that vault from the specified collections. Um, if they want to unstake, they have to kind of wait the unstaking duration. Um, and then the admin can also attach rewards to the vault. So. You know, they you can incentivize users to stake their, their NFTs in the vault. Um, and kind of every every block the the users will be able to claim more of more and more rewards from the vault, you know, depending on how many NFTs they have staked. Yes. Um, yes. And for that, 
um, what is the what is the limitation there in terms of like uh, tokens? Is, would these have to be IBC tokens on the passage chain, or what's what are our options there? Yeah, they would have to be kind of those native tokens, um, depending on on the chain. You know, this is deployed on it. Mm -hmm. Presumably, it's the passage chain. So yeah, you're it's right. going to have to be tokens that are on the passage chain. Okay, cool. But that would include native assets like Passage or IBC tokens. Yeah, you could add, you could you could incentivize it with Bitcoin. I mean, that would be pretty pretty awesome. So. <laughs> so if, yeah. if, you could, if you could get like some you know wrapped Bitcoin or something from Osmosis transferred over to Passage, um, yeah. yeah, you could use that too. Um, Sick. And that's the thing I'm thinking about is like, just what what kind of options are we giving creators because with this, you know, um, they don't have to have a, a um, treasury of a bunch of assets with, you know, market value. Uh, as, as long as they can create their own token, get it on the passage chain somehow, right? And we don't have to figure that whole process out right now um, from a from a front end perspective. But um, and then um, if they are able to, this is something we got to think about as we connect some of the pieces here, require that specific token for x other feature right giving them kind of an easy way to um turn staking into access to whatever as long as they're requiring the token that they made on token factory or whatever if they can make it on osmosis and, and transfer it or, or whatnot um but yeah just thinking of like how could people get creative with this as we open up you know front end pieces for them to interact more more easily with this type of thing that's kind of where my head's going so that's good to know yeah, for sure, and, and and that should be doable. Um, so, so yeah, so I had to transfer the the that contracts repo over, and then um, and then there's also like a little front end dashboard that can be used to kind of create vaults and that the admin can use. Nice. Um, so that's still in development; should be done in the next next couple of days, and then that's a separate repo that I have to transfer over. Yeah. And Greg, to your question, basically my thought with, with how we apply this for eggs is that um, we set up a, a specific token of some kind. You can call it YOP or whatever. Um, and the idea would be that um, people can then, people would get those tokens for staking their egg and their character, right? We'd acquire them. Oh, and this is a question. And you were, yeah, 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 right. Um, can we require people to stake um like like a specific um like you have to stake one from this collection and one from this collection yeah that's basically how it works um cool. Cool. and and you can't really modify it without modifying the contracts but the way right. it works is you know when you create the vault you specify some number of collection addresses so like let's yes. say it's a passage nft and a and, a, and an egg NFT. Yep. yep. Um, so a user has to stake one from each collection in order to get basically one unit of state that can collect. Cool. Them. Gotcha. Could you? Is there a way to um, specify? This isn't necessary for this application, but to specify, like, more than just um, like one from each collection. Um, is there a way to specify how many are required from each collection? Um, yes, yes. I mean, not, not in the current implementation, but that is something we can, we can look at. I kind of okay, want to so... get, get this initial version over so that you guys can yeah, totally. digest it and, and then really, you know, we can kind of come up with some final changes that we might need and then and put those in and, and iterate. Them. Yeah, totally. Totally. That's perfect. Yes. Because I can see an instance where it's like, I mean, not for our application, for our application, it's it's one to one right it's one of each to get one share of state right um but um i guess the applications where somebody's like well you need three of these and one of these whatever yeah um but uh greg to finish answering your question um the idea that i had for how this applies we wanted to be broadly applicable for people to use this in a, in a modular way right um which is why I like the the generic token issuance, which allows a lot of flexibility for like, okay, well then what do they do with that token? Yada, yada. And for us, I was thinking for the eggs, we can have it issue a unique token that's only available through the egg staking. Um, 
that they then use to redeem uh, uh, NFTs that where they're working towards hatching the egg. Basically, they have to get a certain number of these NFTs or um, get different ones to combine them, make the egg, whatever, like that type of thing. So that, um, again, we have a generic mechanism that can work for a lot of projects, but also makes sense for how we want to do egg staking in terms of incentivizing people to um, uh, hold the eggs to get the best chance at a rare. Okay, so I just want to ask on the mechanics of that, the mm -hmm. or original idea, you know, as you are aware, was to stake an egg with a character and the length of the yep. time of staking increased the rarity. So in the new mechanism, having gain coins, those coins would just go into like a pool that you have, right? They wouldn't be yeah. tied to the NFTs that you have staked. And the reason that I ask is that mm -hmm. this uh, could transform into uh, not necessarily pay to win, but like whoever spends the most money to get the best stuff because yep. people would be able to buy those tokens to get the more rare yep. stuff or uh, people who own more NFTs would be able to go a shorter amount of time to get a m larger pooled amount to get a rare NFT. Yeah, and that, exactly. And if that's if that's acceptable, that's fine. I just want to point out that that's a difference in changing the mechanism. As before, everybody was limited to like your NFT will have to be tied up, and that determines your rarity. And there's nothing you can do about it. Whereas this which could be positive for the project. If people get more yeah. NFTs, then they right. will get income faster and therefore get rares faster. Yeah. Yeah. And I am, I'm, 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 no matter how we do it, if the assets are decentralized, I mean, there's, there's probably ways to prevent this, but like you could have people who are, um, uh, uh, people who have, I mean, it, it could happen on the back end, right? It happens either early or on the back end, right? Cause on the back end, um, Okay, let's say somebody gets a rare because they were in first and they only had one NFT, right? So, but but they have this rare now and suddenly people are willing to pay egregious amounts of passage for it. They can sell it then, right? And so ultimately, it's still up to the users um, to decide, you know, if somebody um, wants to sell their tokens or wait for the rare, right? Because um, each each person who has an NFT, a strange plant NFT, an egg NFT, it's up to them to decide what happens, right? Because there's no pay to win if nobody's willing to sell those tokens, right? But if people are willing to sell those tokens, the question is, do we let them, right? And I say, I'm cool with that um, because it does give people who weren't involved an opportunity to get in in the middle, right? Um, before, um, the, dif the difficulty with it before was, um, I guess there wasn't a great structure for what happened to somebody who wants to start staking? Is there a difference between people who never stake the NFT, right? Or who, um, uh, uh, somebody who was staking from the beginning and waits all the way through, whatever. There's, there's a couple different, just frankly, I think a trade off in where you have the um, uh, pay to win problem. And pay to win is always going to be some level of difficulty in, um, you know, an, an open economy, right? An, an open, you know, uh, uh, decentralized economy it's just where does it happen does it happen as soon as people start staking because they're selling their tokens or does it happen and again they're speculating too that like maybe those tokens actually become more valuable later on than right away whatever so it's it just makes the game different i don't think it's better or worse necessarily but we can talk through you know how we structure that as well good questions though i like that james any other questions on the um uh uh staking contracts yeah good day everyone jam jam so hey. that's you please i will have to good day hello can you hear me so that's you please i would like to we would like to see the contract so we could know what and what functions we could integrate on the front end as well integrating it in the dashboard yeah, for sure. They'll, they'll, be, they'll be available as soon as um, I can get them transferred over. So probably Great. today. Right. So please, I'll ping you uh, privately so we, I and my team, we could have a meeting with you to go over it and know what functions are required 
on the front end and how we can interact with it and get it done. Yeah, for sure. We can uh, we can kind of do that on a on an offline. Also. And then I think once we've had a chance to review and determine whatever modifications or changes we need to make, after that we can do the peer review. Um, James and team can do that. I think it doesn't really make sense to do it now if we are potentially going to make changes before it's considered final. Yeah, that sounds good. Beans. All right, then I think the last thing on our list is um, something that was raised by Greg as a potential project to put out to the group. Um, I want to invite Anil from Bitwit to the stage. So essentially, we're looking to have an airdrop checker site built um, for the passage airdrop. Right now, it's specifically applicable to the Strange Clinic community. Um, they had an initial claiming period, which started um, last about a year ago, just under a year ago. And if you staked all of your airdrop um, by a certain deadline, which was December 29th, you and stake it for 14 months consecutively, you'll be eligible for a second airdrop. So that's ongoing. I think that will end in like March, um, March or April. And we don't have currently an airdrop checker site to have people go to to confirm their eligibility, um, to confirm that they will receive the second airdrop based on their staking. So we had a document that was put together. Um, thank you, Greg, I'll share it. Um, but I think, you know, Anil, your team worked on the initial airdrop, like helping us put that together, put together the mechanics and had a, a checker site up for the original claim. And so I think it would really make sense to have your team get involved on that and wanted to just talk about that with you. Yep. Uh, thank you, Brianna. So I think, you know, we can, uh, up, I'll be uh, developing a new uh, airdrop checker site uh, for this uh, staking thing. Uh, since the indexer is ready and full node is, archive node is also available, this should be uh, fairly straightforward. We'll come up with estimations on timelines and uh, uh, costs uh, um, by next week, and then yeah, maybe we can take it forward from there. Greg, is there anything specific that you wanted to highlight from this um, or Lex? I think Anil's team is already very aware of the requirements and everything, so it again, it should be straightforward. Okay. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Just the mechanics that we have to make sure we get down, and I put those in comments in our in moderator chat. I did the things that I had commented on that I didn't include in the RFP that were unknown to me because this was just a a draft. So I don't know if you've taken a look at that and modified it, but there were some things like the mechanics of uh, they have to stake for fourteen months, and we had talked about if they didn't stake the full amount of the original airdrop that their airdrop would just be reduced not just wiped out but that it would be reduced per nft and that i believe town one nft amounts were gonna be knocked off first and then town two so like there was a mechanism for you'd have to be like determine how much did you stake and remain staked and then which NFTs did you own to get that and do that calculation? And I didn't know if that was still the plan and I didn't know how to put those mechanics into the document. Yeah, I think- Yeah, it's sure, Greg. Um, so yeah, we'll check out all those uh, mechanics and uh, come up with a plan. Awesome. Lex, I don't even, I mean, from the beginning, we've basically been saying it has to be the entire airdrop, but I know there were certain exceptions or, you know, scenarios where somebody had to use a couple passage for gas um, to, to actually st claim and stake their airdrop. So then <laughs> they're missing two passage or something from the yeah. entire yeah, yeah. state. Let's, let's offline about it. I and mean, we can figure out like, what's a reasonable margin. I mean, also, um, for instance, if, if, somebody received uh like i think greg mentioned this as well like if somebody received uh or had five characters but only staked but didn't stake in all of the airdrop they could still get um 
the remainder on like the four four of those nfts right like if if that's what makes up the difference whatever things like that we could talk about that i think it's going to be a little bit complicated but we can simplify it as much as possible and just set some standards that are reasonable right i don't want anyone to miss out because of two passage for gas but also like yeah we we don't want uh uh we want to make it uh to meet expectations right and so there was a standard you had to stake everything but that doesn't mean you had to stake every passage from every nft necessarily right but for any given nft you have to you have to stake it staked the appropriate amount to receive the remainder of that airdrop so I think, and it'll give us a bit of time just to get this um, proposal for the bounty up and we'll post it on GitHub and then you guys can come up with, um, you know, your budget and, and timeline and what you think it's going to take. I think you probably have an idea already, but we'll want to make sure that we have everything lined out for you when it comes to these mechanics and specifications. Yep, sure. Um, looking at this question, that's an interesting approach. So if you staked for the entire 14 months, you would get 100%. If you staked for a shorter amount, you would get 50%. In my opinion, that's not a concession that we're wanting to make because it's always been since the white paper, um, 14 months. So I think it's more about how much you staked from each character versus the amount of time because that, that 14 months yeah. really hasn't changed since the earliest uh, time we've talked about the airdrop. Right. Yeah. The original well, discussion was that, yeah, that you had to have the amount staked by December 29th of 2023, and that amount had to remain staked for the full 14 months. Um, and you'll see in previous discussions in the Discord, there had been like, well, what if uh, you didn't stake the full 100% of it? That was a different story, but it still had to remain staked for the full 14 months. We'll we'll offline about that. I think within the team, so we can make some recommendations. Um, and just based on whatever community conversations have already happened, I think we want to go with probably the broader community sentiment um, as it relates to this, and something that's fair and just makes sense. So we'll we'll talk about this with the team, and then we'll get that bounty up like within the next week, um, so we can get that moving. We do have a few months, but it would be good for people to start checking now. Um, and then if there is any troubleshooting needed, you know, we'll have some time to just review with folks. At this point, I think that's all I had on my agenda. There's a lot, a lot of moving parts, a lot going on, but I think we've got oh, yeah. um, the right people connected. Um, we have James and um, Tassio connected. We've gotten... Max and the Node Fleet team connected. So there's a lot of good conversations happening in collaboration. I'm Absolutely. Super well, and there's only going to be more opportunities, especially as we get further into Cosmos Community Hub. There'll be a lot of cool opportunities there. Um, just had a conversation with another team that wants to be involved in the Community Hub, which is really, really cool. And then also, um, yeah, just as we get further into the alpha, we have a really, really cool lineup of teams that are coming into the closed alpha. Um, and I mean, people with very diverse use cases, but we are starting to see some patterns in terms of, um, interactive agencies working with large fortune 500 companies to do virtual events and things like that. In addition to like game studios, um, building games and wanting to use passage to host their games for demos, for, um, stakeholder meetings, you know, to give art feedback, things like that, making their game experience super accessible non-technical users without having to work through like uh, you know a, a version control software of some kind to make sure they have the right repo and that they've got the right hardware and all this nonsense um so it's really really cool seeing the community uh grow of and again most of these people we had a few people that actually surprising coming from the web 2 space who um were using a different virtual platform and actually were excited about passage because of the blockchain features so that's really exciting um, to see that people really are growing in their appreciation and education around blockchain. Um, but most of these people 
have no idea about the chain uh, and they, they don't need to know anything about the chain. That's the beauty of what we're building here is that it's all going to happen behind the scenes. As we have more and more blockchain integrations, there will always be a um, user-friendly way for Web2 people to get involved without having to worry about that stuff, but still bringing value to the usage of the chain on the platform. So really exciting because again, like we're bringing people in from the outside. We're not um, uh, limiting ourselves to Web3 users, right? We have access to a huge market of people who want more human interactions in virtual environments, whether that's people doing remote work, virtual agencies, game agencies, things like that. So it's, it's pretty cool. Just an encouragement that not only are we kind of building new things um, in the open source community, but there's gonna be a really rich variety of use cases on the platform side and just more and more opportunities to create value in the ecosystem, so. Thoughts, hopes, dreams. You guys are awesome. Thanks for hanging out. We've got an incredible crew building here in the open source community on Passage. And uh, I only see this growing. I mean, this is like the nadir of the market. We're at the low point where there's, frankly, not a lot of people hanging out. Um, I see people whose accounts are 10 times, 100 times the size of ours who get the same engagement or less, right, as Passage on my personal account. We have a thriving community and it's only going to do uh, multiples in terms of people interacting and excited about space as we get more, you know, cyclical hype, right? But that's not what we're about. The goal here is always constantly building and um, creating stuff that's always valuable, no matter what's going on in the market. And uh, the cycles are just, just a fun bonus. So drop up, guys. We're, uh, we're making waves. Go team, go. Awesome. Thank you so much, everybody. We'll catch you next Peace. time. Peace. Passage.